Friday night saw a Western Conference matchup between the San Antonio Spurs and the Dallas Mavericks at the AT&T Center in San Antonio. Dallas, who are coming off of a win against the Indiana Pacers, now have a 8-7 record and are picking up some momentum now with the return of Kristaps Porzingis into the starting lineup. Whereas the San Antonio Spurs are coming off of a heavy defeat from the former NBA champions, the Golden State Warriors, as they lost the game 121 to 99, and they currently hold an 8-8 record heading into tonight's contest. The Dallas Mavericks were able to take tonight's game 122-117 as it went down the wire despite big performances from the San Antonio Spurs superstars DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge as they both finished with 26 and 29 points respectively. Mavs were led tonight by no other than the wonder boy Luka Doncic as he finished with 36 points, 11 assists and 9 rebounds as well as Porzingis handing his 21 points and 8 rebounds. Enough from me, let's get into tonight's game. The Mavs took the first possession of the game and went straight to Porzingis, which is a good sign for the Mavs as he is able to make an instant impact. as he knocks down his three. He will definitely be key for the Mavs going forward and the way they use him as a secondary option to Luka suits his style of play better as he only has to hit open shots on pops, rolls and occasional post ups. The first quarter was led by Luka Doncic as the Spurs didn't have any answers for him as he picked apart their defense either to create or to score for himself. Luka is currently building a very strong argument for why he should be the next MVP of the league as he is currently averaging an almost triple double with 26.7 points, 9.7 rebounds and 9.5 assists per game and the crazy thing is he's 21 years old. Luka went on to finish this game with 36 points, 11 assists and 9 rebounds. The Mavs took the first quarter 37-34 with their all-round performance, which allowed them to have the slight edge for the rest of the game. The second quarter saw backup PG Jalen Brunson step up as he led the second group as well as playing 31 minutes while contributing 16 points, 4 rebounds and 6 assists. He was accompanied by Tim Hardaway Jr which turned out to be a deadly combination in this game as he finished with 21 points. I truly believe if the Mavs keep going the way they are, in the next few seasons, they will be tough to beat. They have a deep bench that can come on and pick up from where the starters left off, as well as be integrated within the starters and see no difference in play. And when a team has a balanced combination of star power and bench power, they usually do well come playoff time. It's very clear how the Mavs want to play and that's through Luka having the ball for most of their possessions and let him create or score. The reason the Mavs can be successful is that the players around Luka allow him to have the freedom as they know they will get their shots as Luka is an elite level passer. So if you take Luka's options away, they have Porzingis and Hardaway Jr who can create and score as well as their bench who are all very good team players and know how to move off ball.
The Mavs took the second and tied the third quarter, but were still able to maintain their lead heading into the fourth. And we were able to see multiple players step up and make plays going down the stretch. It seemed that the Mavs firepower was too much for the Spurs as they were unable to close the gap despite winning the fourth quarter 32 to 27. The Spurs lost this game 122 to 117. Let's go back to the Mavs opening play. As you can see, they set up in a horns action with Doncic, Porzingis and Brunson as well as having Hardaway in the corner. As you will see, Doncic will enter the ball into Brunson and then follow Porzingis into a double stagger action. Now, Tim Hardaway Jr. has his man quite close to him which gives him an advantage on the screen especially as he curls to the basket because all he has to do is seal his man and keep him behind him. The same applies if they switch the first screen as the switching defender is out of position and there is no one between Tim Hardaway Jr. and the basket. The next part of the action is for Doncic to set a back screen for Bozingas for a lob which they will sometimes get if the defense do a poor job but they take away the lob option pretty well forcing Luka to pop onto the three point line. Now the read for the lob is if Porzingis' defender is trailing and there is no one between him and the rim. So if Bronson threw the pass now, it would have been two points. But he decides to hit Doncic on the pop for a potential three and to continue the action. Once Brunson makes his pass, he then cuts through to the corner. Now pay attention to the Mavs spacing as they try to isolate Porzingis 1v1 in the post. The read here is if Porzingis didn't feel he had an advantage, he kicks it straight back out and sprints into a ball screen, which most teams in the NBA will force to the sideline, also known as icing the screen. This plays perfectly into the Mavs favour as this creates a pick and pop option as the Mavs weak side spacing is very close together. This frees Pozingas up at the top for a three. What's up everybody, it's Coach Pierce here and I just want to say a massive thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to check out the two videos that are down below. I'll be leaving the links in the description, so be sure to check them out. If you guys want to see more of me, go follow up my Instagram and Twitter pages, which will be up here. They will also be linked into my YouTube banner, so just click on the icon and it should guide you to where you want to go to. And finally, before you go today, make sure you give the video a like, leave a comment, I'll do my best to respond, and make sure you all subscribe to my channel. I've been Coach Pierce, and I'll see you all next time.